Team Talk. I am Sam Patterson, and we're here today with Eric Simmons, who has all kinds of fame. He's here today as the uh, founder of Clayco. And why don't you start by talking a little bit about your story as others depict it, and your story as you understand it. Sure. Um, well, for, first of all, thanks. Thanks for having me. Um, so the first one was uh, this is how I got how, basically how I got started on this. Um, so I actually I actually got started on this. Um, when I was in high school, which wasn't uh, too long ago, actually, which was just two years ago. Um, and uh, I actually just got, it, it got started because one of my teachers pulled me aside and um, you know, she saw I wasn't interested in her class. And uh, she pulled me aside and you know, I was expecting her to yell at me, but she ended up saying, you know, how can I make you interested in my class? And uh, you know, it was really interesting because no teachers had really asked me that before. Um, they just said, you know, you need to turn in your homework or you're going to call your parents and my parents would uh, called the teachers, and you know, I'm sure you're very familiar. So, um, so anyway, so she it got me thinking, and I, you know, I ended up looking at you know, how she was teaching in the classroom, and, and it really came down to uh, the resources weren't uh, that she was using weren't really relevant or engaging. You know, reading out of the textbook and doing worksheets just wasn't that fun. Um, so I said, well, why don't we use some digital resources online, and you know, it might make the class a bit more. Um, and so we did that, and, um, and what, I ended up, uh, what I ended up realizing is the teachers don't have a lot of time to invest in you know, finding good digital resources on their own. And so Clayco is very much a way for teachers to uh, find great digital resources to use in their class, uh, classroom um, by uh, the help of other teachers. So if a teacher finds a really great resource, they can post it on uh, Clayco.com, and another teacher can come and, uh, and use that resource and integrate that. And when you were working with the, um, I want to ask you a little bit more about the, the process of, sure. of like coming to this realization. When you were working with the teacher, you said that you found that she just didn't have a lot of time to uh, find digital resources. What was it you were doing? Were you like searching Google? How were you finding the resources that you were bringing to her? Yeah, it was, it was like, uh, you know, searching Google, uh, videos on YouTube were um, a great, it was, it was a great segue. I mean, I think for a lot of things, um, uh, you know, like for like DNA, you know, that was one of the things that, um, where it, it was very, it was very tangible when you had a interactive 3D model of DNA. And see was this a science class? Yeah, it was oh. a science class. And so it was very, it was very tangible to see uh, that in action, you know, versus seeing a printed page in a textbook with some text beside it, being able to like really like, you know, touch it and interact with it was, was a really um, fundamentally uh, changing experience um, for me. And um, I assume that she was excited to have these resources. Yeah, yeah. I mean, she she I mean, she loved it. She she wasn't she wasn't necessarily afraid of using technology. It was more of I think this is a, with a lot of teachers. It's just you know, um, they they just it, it's hard to find the time to invest in learning something new, um, and especially when there isn't a proven um, there, there isn't a standardized tool for doing something like this yet. Um, so it's, 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 it's a risk, for, you know, I feel, for a lot of teachers. Well, yeah, it's definitely a risk, and I think that innovation is really hard in the classroom because, you know, a lot of teachers don't feel like they have the time to fail. Yeah. You know, they're going to try something, but it better work because, yeah. you know, you only have so many minutes in the classroom. Um, so how did you get from saying, oh, well, teachers need to be able to have more access to tools to, I'm going to build a new way for teachers to interact with resources and each other. I mean, that seems to be, you know, a real differentiating step. So a lot of, a lot of people may make it to the first step, but I don't know that a lot of people make it to that second step. Yeah, I think, um, and for me, it was very much, it, like, like a lot of, you know, great, um, you know, projects that started as a side project. You know, was, uh, I was doing software consulting at the time, um, and so I, I knew how to you know engineer your applications. And so, um, you know, I said, well, you know, why don't why don't I create something that we can use in our classroom? And it was just a side project. And, um, and so you were doing software consulting in high school. Yeah, I was doing software consulting in high school, um, and so I was able to save up a you know a decent bit of money. And so after I graduated high school, um, you know, at this started my junior year of high school. I started working on uh, what was class connected now Clayco. Um, and so after high school, I, um, I had a choice of either spending um, a lot of my money going to college, or I could take that money and invest it in something that I found um, very interesting and um, that I was very passionate about at the time, which was you know building really great tools for teachers to use. 
um, that save them time and help them be more effective. And so it, to me, it was a no-brainer um, going and working on Class Connector like a Excellent. Um, could you, I've got my profile called up here so we have something to look at, but I'm wondering sure. if you could kind of walk us through the parts of the website, and I'll be over here sure. on the other side of this camera. Yeah, so this is, um, this is what you see when you log in, um, and so uh, Sam is subscribed to a few of the teachers on the site, and you can see there's a feed here of the activity that's, uh, that's going on with the teachers that he's following, and you can watch the resources that other teachers are posting. And so if you see something you like, um, you know, you can click into it. Um, and, um, and what's really cool here is that if you like a resource, um, you know, you go and look through this thing, uh, there's this button here that says snap to binder. And so without even having to download, without having to upload anything, um, you can just put it directly into your uh, repository of resources. Um, and this is, this is amazing because it allows teachers to share really great curriculum um, and use really great curriculum with a very low, um, a very low cost to waiting for things to download, um, which making it very seamless to, to make that process happen. Um, but uh, what's very cool is like if you, uh, you know, if you click on uh, Cami Goucher, um, you can actually see you know really uh, a very cool portfolio of this teacher's work, um, and uh, and all the things that she's posted on here, and you know, where she's from, and how many people subscribe to her. Um, and uh, it's it's very you know it's very cool to, to be able to you know can you, can you talk a little bit about subscribers and subscriptions and what kind of models you're pulling in and why that's an important part of what you've got going on here? Yeah, yeah. So so we we went with a um, you know a subscriber subscription model um, for those who are on Twitter. It's very much like follow um, like following people. And the reason we went with this was um, it's uh, you know teachers are becoming. Uh, they're the, they're the new age publisher. They they create really you know, they're creating really great resources with aided with tools to create awesome content. Um, and so what, what what we're trying to do is give teachers a, um, a just an audience an audience for other teachers to um, to follow their work and even follow the work of other teachers. Um, and so, so the way we've done it is through subscriptions. You can subscribe to as many teachers as you'd like. Um, and, you know, whether they're teaching the same grade or if they're teaching something you're just interested in. Um, so that's very cool. Now, um, you said giving teachers an audience. And there have been a couple times, like earlier on when you were talking about your own personal experience, you said this one teacher actually said, how can I make you more engaged? Whereas other teachers had just said, why aren't you turning in your homework? Yeah. Um, why, why is audience important and what role does this audience of teachers play in, in what you see as kind of where education is going? Yeah, I think, I mean, I think, um, I think, uh, you know, Steve Jobs had a great quote where he was talking about, uh, why Apple, what, you know, what, what made Apple very successful. And so his, uh, he said something along the lines of, uh, you know, we let, we let the, the best ideas rise to the top of the company. And that's 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 a very um, it, it's a it's a it's a strategy that um, allows really great ideas to be surfaced and to be used um, on, on very large scales. And so, what, what, why it's very important here is um, you know every every teacher has a very unique perspective on how to teach something in the classroom. And uh, the best um, you know, the best resources, the best way to teach something should be shared, and it should be something that every teacher has access to. Um, and, and I think that's the general trend is instead of everyone having to create a lot of these resources from scratch and figuring out how to teach everything from scratch, um, we're going to a model where um, you know, really great resources directed for certain types of students um, is possible. You know, if, uh, if you know, the way you teach a kid about um, you know, uh, voting demographics in an inner city school versus the one you teach in an affluent school um, is very different. And so allowing teachers to share these you know, permutations of how to teach something um, is, is really important in that respect. Now, this is a site that is in beta. You guys are still building it and testing it. Um, what have you learned from your users so far? And where do you see this going to? Yeah. And, and kind of how, you know, I, I'm pretty active on here, but I don't really have a sense. I know there's a lot more people on it than when I began, yeah. but I don't really have a sense of how many users you're at right now. I see a lot of activity. Yeah. Um, but could you talk a little? 
Yeah. Um, so uh, just just to, I, I, you asked uh, what uh, what the future of the site looks like and what we've learned from users. Right. About it. Um, I think I think the biggest thing that we've learned from our users. Um, I think. Um, I think I think what the, the, big, the biggest thing we learned is uh, we keep hearing from our users that they want to find not necessarily content. Uh, you know, a lot of teachers can come here, and most teachers are actually they don't say we want to find content from other teachers. It's uh, we, the first thing they say is we want to find other teachers like me, um, and that was that was kind of an interesting realization that not every teacher um, has access to a teacher that is teaching the same thing. And so for me, as, as an entrepreneur, as an engineer, I can't imagine doing my job. Um, you know, particularly well without being able to talk to other people about best practices or talk to them if they have, if they have questions and things like that. Um, so that was that was a very interesting realization. Um, and I think how that's uh, you know going into the future, um, you know, we're going to be making it really easy for other teachers to find teachers like them all around the country um, to be able to share resources, to collaborate, and ask questions. Um, and uh, so that it's not just limited to sharing content; it's going to be sharing all types of knowledge. Say a little more about sharing all types of knowledge. What is, what is it your, fill that out for me. I'm not sure what you Yeah, mean. so I mean, so, so content is you know, one type of you know, basically how, how did you teach this in your classroom. Right, and the content's very visible, right? Yep. Like I've got you know, this binder of digital citizenship content right here, right? Yeah, absolutely. And um, you know, and this, this is great, and this is very useful for a lot of teachers. Um, but, uh, but you know, well, for example, one of the things we keep hearing from teachers is, you know, it'd be great if there's a place where we could go and ask questions of, from other science teachers. Mm -hmm. It would be great if we could go and, um, you know, video chat with other classrooms or you know with other teachers and you know things things of that nature. Where um, it's not just the resources; it's also how do I do this? Oh, this this happened. What's the best way to do this? Um, so essentially. Um, very much the way, if you're familiar with Quora, like how Quora views knowledge, um, is you know asking questions and receiving a response. Um, that that seems like a very uh, uh, our, our users think it's very important that, that they can be able to, to have that say, that uh, that sort of interaction with other teachers. I, I find that one of the things I enjoy most about the network I have on Twitter is the fact that there's a bunch of people now, and I know their different areas of expertise, and I can send them a question, and they get back to me. Yeah. And you know, it's just people that a few months ago I didn't know from anybody, but through interacting and chatting, we've developed that and they'll actually respond. So, you know, the idea of having something like that where people are, you know, focused communities answering questions or something is, is important because it allows us to kind of filter our expertise because I'm sure you've noticed that teachers really like listening to other teachers. Yeah. And that's about it. Yeah. <laughs> um, with the like video chatting with other classrooms, I've seen that a lot in the um, flat classroom project. Yes, yes. Um, could you share a little bit about what you've learned as far as how teachers are using that and how that is changing how they're thinking about their classrooms? Yeah, I think. Um, I mean, I think specifically with like the flat classroom project, it was kind of interesting um, because uh, you know from when I was in school, video chatting with another. I mean, I remember I had a pen pal. And it was a pen, I had a pen panel in Australia, and um, you know, until you're actually talking to somebody face to face, it's it's very intangible. Um, you know what? You, you know, he explained how you know the Australian school systems worked and what his life was like and what was popular over there. Um, but really, just being able to talk to somebody face to face um, and and hear hear what they have to say to it and immediately kind of interact and be able to ask questions um, really really um, drills home. Uh, the point of you know the, a global classroom, you know, being able to see what other cultures are like, and that's that's I think is was very interesting. Um, maybe not even other classrooms, but um, other professions. You know, being able to Skype with authors or um, actors or whatever it may be. I w have been enjoying listening to teachers, especially some of the. Um a lot of fifth and sixth grade teachers seem to be doing the different mystery Skype callers or mystery Skype day. Well, they'll actually line up a bunch of different people that'll Skype into their classroom through the day, and the kids will have to ask questions about, you know, how does this, you know, what's it like there, and they have to figure out where this person is based on their ability to, you know, essentially play twenty questions with yeah, them. Yeah. And I think that's uh, a. It, it's very thing. cool. It's very cool. Um, other questions. So. 
I know that you, that I've talked to Scott a little bit about this, yeah. um, how essentially we're in this place of transitioning as a world, like as the cloud gets more and more developed, the file cabinets become less and less relevant and the access becomes potentially much greater. Uh, have you met with any teachers who aren't necessarily open to this idea of storing their work someplace and tagging it and having everyone have access to it? What kind of, of pushback does an idea like this get? I mean, I love it. Yeah. And I'm, you know, perhaps in some people's eyes, overexcited. <laughs> but I imagine that isn't the universal reception you get. What, what kind of pushback do you get? Um, I, think, I think a lot of teachers, uh, you know, I think... There's, uh, with, with content sites, usually you have a uh, 97 to 99% of consumers, and you have uh, 1 to 3% of creators. Um, and that's, that's, pretty, that's pretty accurate with what we're seeing. So a lot of teachers um, really like uh, using other people's stuff, but they don't like putting their own stuff online. Um, and, and that's just that's what the data is showing us. Um, and, uh, and, that's, and that's okay, because we, uh, we want people that are proud of their work and you know they're kind of a, they, they understand um, why sharing resources is, is a really great idea um, and um, and so it's, it's the, the the pushback of the, the you know a lot of teachers will come here and they'll, they'll only use the site for finding other stuff um, which is fine you know and, and then we have teachers that come here and the primary reason they use it is just to you know store their stuff um, and share it with other people so it's, it's an ecosystem like like many things. And what is, um, and then I'll open it up, we've got a couple teachers here in the room if they have questions they can ask, but one of the questions I want to know is what is Clayco's relationship to the content on the site? Like some sites own the content on their site. Yeah. What's Clayco's relationship to this content that's being essentially crowdsourced tagged to the site? Yeah, it's our, our relationship is very much we are we just host it. Um, it's um, a lot of the stuff is licensed underneath uh, you know Creative Commons, um, and uh, you can you can add in, in the descriptions for the content. You can add whatever license you'd like. Um, otherwise, it's 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 very much in the way that uh, you know Google um, and you know, like a Dropbox would handle content. So they, they're essentially providing a service for you to uh, let your content be there. Um, but in, in order to do that, there, uh, we do have to have permission from you, which is in the terms of service, to be able to host your content. If you make it public, um, you're granting us permission to let other people you know, copy it and use it. Mm -hmm. um, but, uh, but if you have a certain license, then ha that has to be upheld by the, you know, the party um, that uses your content. So you're, you, it is entirely in your hands if, uh, how, how you want your, the, the content to be licensed. And I've noticed that there's some sites that seem to have... Um a bit of a firewall, like when I put it into the binder, it'll say this can't be viewed on a third-party site or something like that, and just instructs you to click through to it. But you're still able to associate whatever tags you have with that site. You just can't necessarily view the site inside of Clayco. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, in the room, are there any other questions about Clayco or Eric's experience? I have one actually. Yeah. Um, so. At the moment that you finished making a user on Facebook, what do you see as sort of like the first and most important steps? That is a very good question. That's a very good question. Fantastic question. Um, so uh, the, most, the most important steps um, for us, and we're actually uh, changing them because we, uh, we, we found through uh, data that uh, we, we made, we made a, you know, a few wrong bets. But um, essentially, uh, the, the big things for us are finding, we found that um, if you find three or more teachers that teach the same thing that you do. Um, the retention goes from 10% uh, to 80. Um, so making, basically finding, getting you in, uh, connected to at least three other people that have content on their profiles that are like you um, dramatically increases the retention of a teacher uh, or a person coming to our site. So we, we push you to subscribe to people. Um, we, uh, you know, we push you to, so number one is subscribing, number two is filling out your profile information, um, and number three is actually learning how to use the, the curation tool that we have here um, for storing your resources. Um, and it's uh, it's very much, we were, uh, those are the three things, and we're working on emphasizing the profile completion part, because a lot of teachers are coming here, and they subscribe to people, they skimp on the profile, they might use the tool. Um, so you know, it's very important that everyone fills out their profile. Um, but, uh, but that's the first thing that we kind of walk them through. 
another question. Is okay. uh, um, so I'm noticing that there's a lot of uh, opportunity for uploading, you know, presentations, documents, just sort of useful materials for the class. Is there any uh, is is there any system in place for students then directly accessing this, or is it very intentionally a teacher to teacher? We've, we've uh, we made it, um, like, so you can, when it's public, you know, a link can be handed out to students so they can access this stuff at home. Um, and that was very intentional um, because it's, uh, it can, you know, it's, it's some, a lot of teachers will, you know, want to send the stuff home. So as they update the resources, the students are automatically, um, you know, updated as well. Um, so um, in, in the future, we, we uh, might be adding in, you know, more student-facing features. Uh, but for now, um, it's, it's, it's simple enough. Um, to just hand out a link, um, so that, that seems to be somewhat sufficient. All right. Well, thank you very much for sharing with us today. We're going to wrap up the uh, Patui Talk broadcast. Be sure to join us in half an hour for Patui Chat. Thanks a lot.